Urolithin A is a nutrient found in foods, and, and this compound has been getting a lot of attention because of claims that it can make muscles stronger without any exercise whatsoever, rejuvenate mitochondria, and of course, this goes hand in hand with claims that urolithin A is an anti-aging nutrient. So claims aside, what does the research say about what urolithin A does? So it was discovered in 1980, and turns out that we also make this urolithin A substance. We're able to make it thanks to our gut bacteria. So urolithin A is classified technically as a postbiotic. Postbiotics are compounds made by our good, healthy gut bacteria. Now, urolithin A is also found in foods as well, like blueberries and strawberries, pomegranates and nuts. And there is research that suggests that as we get older, we tend to make less urolithin A as well. It's one of the reasons why people think it might be an anti-aging nutrient, but I would also make the argument that maybe as we get older, we don't eat so well, and that could also play a role in low levels of this nutrient. So pro tip, if you're looking to naturally raise your urolithin A levels, eat a Mediterranean style diet. There is some research that eating a Mediterranean style diet will in fact raise your urolithin A levels. Now one of the things that urolithin A is supposed to do is help with what's called mitophagy, which is a form of autophagy, although here we're talking about getting rid of old, worn out mitochondria. Now, if you're watching this video, you know the mitochondria is a very hot topic in the world of anti-aging research. Defects in the mitochondria may play a role in how quickly we age. Some research suggests that urolithin A helps us get rid of old, worn out mitochondria, and then it appears to help us build new mitochondria in the process that are technically called mitochondrial biogenesis. Now, we look at the research on this stuff. We find that in worms, there is some evidence to suggest that urolithin A can extend the lifespan of worms by about 45%. Those same studies appear to show that in worms, urolithin A can slow the decline of muscle loss as well. And some research shows that when you give it to mice, it also improves their muscle strength as well. So worms and mice are great, but we're humans. What does the research show and how much urolithin A might you want to be taking? if this is something of interest to you. So we have this investigation titled The Effect of Urolithin A Supplementation on Muscle Endurance and Mitochondrial Health in Older Adults. 66 older adults between the ages of 65 and 90 years of age take 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A or a placebo each day for four months. I will point out at the onset that one of the weaknesses of this investigation is that it only involved women and all of those women were Caucasian. So what did they find? So the results of this investigation show that urolithin A at a dosage of 1,000 milligrams reduces C-reactive protein, and CRP is a marker of chronic low-grade inflammation. Urolithin A was also shown to decrease compounds like ceramides and acetylcarnitines, which are linked to defects in the mitochondria. Equally interesting here is that when older adults took this substance, their muscle endurance appeared to increase. And by muscle endurance, I mean the number of times a muscle could contract before fatigue sets in. So in this study, they looked at muscle endurance in a muscle called the tibialis anterior muscle, which is in the front of the leg, and one of the muscles in the finger region of the hand. And they found that in both instances, these muscles could contract more before the muscles got fatigued. Now that's not really a real life situation, but what they also did in this study is they had people perform what's called the six minute walk test, where people walked as far as they could, as fast as they could for six minutes. And they reported that when people took urolithin A, they could walk about 200 feet further in six minutes than people who took a placebo. They clocked in at about 141 feet extra. Now, that may sound like a lot, but I will point out that this was not a significant difference between groups. So in other words, in this study, urolithin A did not help people walk further. It was no significant improvement from the supplement. Okay, so, so much for that study. Let's now switch gears and look at another clinical study. So this investigation has a pretty boastful title, Urolithin A Improves Muscle Strength, Exercise Performance, and Biomarkers of Mitochondrial Health in a Randomized Trial of Middle-Aged Adults. 
So in this investigation, we had 88 men and women. Their average age was 51, and about 85% of the people in this study actually began the study with low levels of urolithin A. The people were split into three groups. There's a placebo group, there's another group that gets 500 milligrams of urolithin A, and another group is given 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A. So this study's got some interesting results that I want to call your attention to. Number one, they find that both the 500 milligram and the 1,000 dose of this supplement causes significant increase in leg strength. Okay, that's interesting. They also report that the average peak torque, which is a measurement of essentially of, of force that the muscle can produce, that increased significantly by about 12% in those people taking 500 milligrams. And interestingly enough, 1,000 milligrams didn't appear to do any better. Those people improved their peak torque by about 10%. Similarly, when they looked at the amount of knee flexion torque that they could produce, so both groups, the 500 milligram and the 1,000 milligram dose, they both increased knee flexion torque by about 10.5%. And I will point out here that these people were not exercising. All they were doing was taking the urolithin A supplement. So what about aerobic fitness? Let's keep in mind that these individuals, again, were not doing any kind of exercise aerobically. They weren't running, walking, swimming, hiking, biking, etc. Nonetheless, it was reported that urolithin A at a dosage of 1,000 milligrams led to significant improvements in VO2 max, more so than when they started doing the investigation. So in the people taking the supplement, in other words, their VO2 max increased significantly. Again, VO2 max is the maximum amount of energy they can make aerobically. These people also did the six minute walk test and it was reported that the 1000 milligram dose not only helped these people walk about 108 feet further in six minutes, but they also walked faster. Their gait speed increased as well, again, in those doing the 1000 milligram dose. The placebo didn't see this and those taking a 500 milligram dose, they didn't see this results either. Now, one thing that's a little odd with this study is that when they looked at markers of mitochondrial health, they found that those who took the 500 milligram dose, they had lower levels of acetylcarnitines, again, which is a marker of mitochondrial health. But oddly enough, those taking the 1,000 milligram dose didn't see that benefit. This is odd because those taking the 1,000 milligram dose, they saw reductions in pro-inflammatory cytokines and C-reactive proteins. Ironically, this wasn't seen in those doing the 500 milligram dose. Now, this investigation was not all thumbs up for urolithin A. Some of the things that did not occur was there was no significant improvement in the quadriceps peak torque. So while it appeared to help the hamstrings generate more force, not the quadriceps. Again, the quadriceps are the four muscles in the front of your thighs. Also, there was no significant change in grip strength. So their hands could not generate more force either. This makes you wonder that if urolithin A really is a muscle developing supplement, its effects might be limited to different muscle groups and not all muscle groups. Let's also keep in mind that while some of the muscles appeared to be able to generate more force, there was no increase in muscle mass in those people taking either dose of urolithin A. And also likewise, the people did not lose body fat either. And one more thing I'll point out is that earlier I mentioned that the people taking 1,000 milligrams, they showed a significant improvement in VO2 max compared to when they started the study. That's good. However, what they saw was not clinically better, not more significantly better than those people who took a placebo. So overall, this study is a bit of a mixed bag with some pros and some cons. One other pro I will point out to you is that neither of the studies I just mentioned to you showed any significant negative side effects in people taking uh, even up to 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A. So we covered an awful lot of information in this video, but I wanted to give you a quick summary of all the results of these two studies in one place so you could compare and contrast. And I just put this table together really fast and just threw a lot of the major results of both of these investigations so you could compare them to each other. I didn't break them down into one study versus another study, but these are the major findings versus the 500 milligram dose and 1,000 milligram dose of uh, urolithin A. And as you can see, it would appear that you might get some more benefits from 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A, but 
Again, those same studies show that in some other respects, 1,000 milligrams might not do things. So based on these two studies, is urolithin A worth your time? And at this junction, I would say, I don't think so. I'm intrigued by these human studies, especially they involved older folks, but I'm not yet convinced that you should be running out, spending a lot of your hard-earned money on this supplement. You can get the same benefits of urolithin A by exercise. It will increase mitochondrial density. You'll make more mitochondria. It'll help clear out other mitochondria. It'll build muscle. It will build muscle and burn fat. That's something that urolithin A does not appear to do. So I'm going to continue to keep my eyes open for urolithin A human research. So subscribe and keep looking for future videos. If you've tried urolithin A, let me know how much you're using and what brand you're using and how long it took for you to see results. And let's move the needle forward and help other people.